Yeah, I mean, I can take you through my process. I think most importantly, that's why you have to make sure that you're writing for yourself, um, for your community, for whatever it is you're, you know, you're an advocate for, make sure that um, whatever speech you're writing, because whatever you write, you know, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be very hard to pull that out if it's not written with that mirroring of the heart and the mind. And if there is nothing behind it that makes it personal for you, a lot of it'll be hard, you know, and I think that that's, ex that's extremely important, even if it's something as a passion. So if you think about it, you know, maybe you're a publicist and you're working for, you know, a company or representing somebody that you, that you care about the work. Well, it might not have been personal in the event that something happened to you, but you care about it. So I just think that that's extremely important. I think for me, my process is, number one, I like to sit with my, with whatever it is. So if I, I'll, I'll like I said, I'll use this most recent example because it's where I am. Um, before when it first came time that they were gonna be looking for commis commencement speakers, for me, what I really wanted to do was just do a lot of reflection um, internally. So I didn't just start writing. I just took some time to think about it. Um, and every time I had an idea come to mind about what it might mean to be graduating in 2020, in the midst of a pandemic, I just took little notes. And that's how I typically start off. I have a lot of notes and I'll put them all in my notes on my phone or you know, in a Google doc or you know, in a Word document. And then I'll come back to them at some point, but every single time I have thought, I just put it there and I sit with it. And you know, for me, something like music helps me a lot. So for my speech, um, it is really geared around this topic, we gonna be all right which uh, rapper Kendrick Lamar has a song that goes, we gonna be all right. And that's a common saying that lots of people have said before. But um, so I listened, I went and listened to those lyrics, right? To Kendrick Lamar's song and put myself back in that mindset. And I've just, every time I think of something, I write it down. And um, when I go tomorrow to record the speech, I'll wake up tomorrow morning very early. Um, I'll go over the speech again. When I'm in the car, I'm sure that I'll be playing, we gonna be all right. Um, again and again and again. And then because, you know, kind of like you, you'll be giving these speeches um, to a small group here. I'll be giving them to a videographer. Um, there won't be actual people there, but I have to bring the same energy as if I was giving it on graduation day. No one asks for a robot to be the commencement speaker. So, you know, people want to watch the virtual graduation and feel as if they are there. And so for me, I will have to visually um, be able to see a, a, um, a graduation, right? I'll, I'll have to be able to see, you know, white chairs, that's what UCLA uses, white chairs filled with families and friends and professors and, you know, all different people for coming from all over the world to see, um, you know, graduates and to celebrate graduates. And so for me, it's visualizing them there. I'll have to see my mother there, right? I'll have to see my brothers there. I'll have to see my father there who, you know, so just, Thinking about those type of things, um, I'll have to see my kids there, even though they won't be there. So again, you know, who is the speech for? And I've given speeches where, you know, I felt like it was for the, the child in me, right? And so I had to visualize that kid. You know, whoever it is, being able to visually do that before you even get up to give the speech um, while you're practicing, I think that's my process. And so I'm always carrying that um, emotion with me every time I'm thinking about the speech as I'm practicing the speech. And then when I get up there, definitely revisiting and making sure that I'm visualizing that. Um, if you're nervous, you know, there are different breathing exercises you can do. Um, even though I've given a lot of speeches, I wouldn't, con I wouldn't say it was nerves, but sometimes I feel feelings where you wanna do a really, really good job. And so before I go on set, I'll put my hands like this. <sighs> breathe in, breathe out, and I do just a series of those. Um, and I that was a technique that I learned in one of my classes at UNO. Most people don't know what you're doing when you do that, right? Um, it's something really quick, really easy, and I use that to this day. So just grounding myself and breathing, taking my time, right? Yes, you know, speeches are timed and you wanna stay on time. Give yourself time when you're writing it, right? Um, because I, I think if you're gonna give a speech, time is really important. I didn't mention that, but time is something. If people say six minutes, then you better be five minutes and 55 seconds. Um, so time is very important. And so, but when you're writing your speech, thinking about that time, because silence and moments of pauses um, are able to bring a lot of 
a lot of impact and effect if you're intentional about them. So you do want to take time to give those pauses, to give people opportunity to hear you. Um, repetition is also very powerful. So repetition is not only powerful for the, for the audience, but it can be powerful for you, right? If you repeat more than once, we're going to be all right. And you change the way you repeat that over and over again, that can also, um, you know, elevate your emotions as well.